we're going to start in down dog. So take, you know, some of you might have just grimaced and said, oh, I can't believe she's doing that. So we're going to start in down dog, big bright hands. And from your down dog, I want you to be really slow and deliberate and bend one knee and then straighten it. So this is like bicycling out your feet, but I want it to be slow. And you can even roll over your toes and turn your hips side to side, much slower than I said, side to side. Now, and you're pushing into your hands, you're, you're deliberately pushing them out away. You're not hanging into it. We're going to do Egyptian feet. So turn both heels to the left and then push into your hands equally. Push your hips away from the mat and then switch sides. Turn your heels the other direction. So you're on the instep of one foot and the outer edge of the other foot. Come back to the middle. Inhale your right leg high and then bend your knee, heel towards your sitting bone and then open your leg. So it's like you're doing that hydrant pose up in the air. Right heels drawing towards left hip, equal weight in your hands. And you can try to lift and lower your thigh. You're making your hip joint mobile. Turn back so that your legs reaching behind you and step that right foot forward behind your right hand. Put your left knee down. Bring your hands up onto your knee, but stay close to it. So keep your chest close to your knee this morning. And then you're gonna push away from that knee like you're rounding up into cat pose. So push your spine away, get your torso vertical. Leave your right hand on your knee. Inhale your left arm overhead. Put your left hand behind the back of your head. Push into your hand. Now I still have my left knee down on the mat. I have my left toes tucked under this morning. You can have them flat. Push your head into your hand and then push your hand back into your head. All right, hands down. Step back, down dog. Inhale your left leg and then bend the knee and open your hip. So it's hydrant pose up in the air. Try to put equal weight into your hands. You'll find your left hand getting a little light. You can raise and lower your left thigh if you like. And then exhaling, step that left foot forward, right behind your left hand, put your right knee down, stay low, low lunge. And then curl up so you're gliding up out of your low lunge with your torso coming up. Hands to your thigh, torso vertical, right arm raises. Right arm goes behind the back of your head and then push your head back into your hand. Notice the sensation. I'm gonna speculate that you feel some sensation down the right side of your body, the right front of your hip joint into your quads. See if you can breathe steadily here. Exhale, hands down. Step back into down dog. Inhale the right leg. Open the right hip, down dog hydrant, and then step that right foot forward, low lunge. Keep your back leg straight and strong this time. 
I want you to walk your right foot off the mat. So maybe your heel stays on the mat, but you're wide. Your hands are down on the mat. And then lift your chest. Bend your knee so it just touches the mat and then straighten it again. So lift your chest, bend your knee a little bit, just a gentle touch, see if you can lift your chest, straighten it again. One more time, bend the back knee. It's not much, it's just a barely a few inches of movement, lift your chest. Pressing into your hands, step back to down dog. Inhale the left leg, down dog hydrant. And then step the left foot forward behind your hand first, straight back leg. So it's a low lunge. And if you prefer to put your knee down, put your knee down. Walk that left foot out. So toes are off the mat, you're wide. And then lift your chest, lower the back knee, just tap the mat and then push back through your heel, straighten the leg, lower and tap, lift your heart, lower and tap, take your time, no emergency, and then pushing into your hands, step back to down. So remember, the alternative to down dog is all fours. So every time Ned or I say down dog, you might say all fours. Just to, that's just a reminder of options and alternatives, things for you to take. All right, inhale our right leg. This time step it wide right from the beginning, right off the mat and put your back knee down. You can keep it up if you like. I've got a block. Put your left forearm on the block. Clasp your hands together. If you like, unclasp your hands. Take your right arm out wide and even reach it up towards your ceiling. Just notice the sensation in your body. Hands into your down dog supportive position or your all fours supportive position. Tuck your back toes, step back. Inhale the left leg. Let's do one more dog hydrant on this side. You might notice a click, 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 click in your spine. It's all your little facet joints getting organized. And then step it wide outside your left hand, right knee down. If you have a block, you can put it, your forearm on it. You can put your forearm on the floor. I just don't really have that accessibility first thing in the morning. Breathe here. If you like that sensation of opening, open your left arm like, you're, like the sun is rising. Turn your torso towards your left and then fly. Shoulder blades draw together. And then bring that hand down. Glide away from your forearm, put the block to the side. We're gonna step back. Down dog. On an inhale breath, raise your gaze. As you exhale, many small steps to the top of your mat. I have to come up on knuckles and fingertips to make enough room for my legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Push your head across the room. Exhale, forward fold, touch your feet. With bent knees, rise up, take your time. Arms overhead. And then exhale, hands come to heart center. Nice job. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. So mobility is strength and range of motion merged together. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Really push into your feet as you come up. Stand up, feel your heels, big toe mounds, and then exhale, hands to heart center. 
Drop your hands. We'll do one more half salute just on the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Drop your hands. Inhale, arms overhead. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant your hands, step the left foot back. Come up into crescent lunge. Take your time. That first crescent lunge is always quite wobbly for me. Back leg is straight and strong. You're up on your, the ball of your foot. Inhale your arms overhead. And then exhale, cactus your arms, draw your shoulder blades together. Inhale your arms overhead. And exhale, plant your hands, step back. All fours are plank here and then lower down to the mat. Bring your hands forward, Sphinx Pose. This is a great place to create some length. So drag your elbows towards your hip pointers, lift your chest. And then if you like, from Sphinx, tuck your toes, press up into forearm plank. At that moment of pressing up, Make sure you gather your ribs together, protect your low back. Exhale, knees down, thighs down, belly down, the elbows dragging back, keep you from crunching into your low back, lift your heart. Step your hands back to where your elbows were. Push into your hands, pass through all fours, and come to down dog. Pause here for a moment. Inhale your right leg, don't go anywhere. Open your hip, down dog hydrant. And then exhale, put your right foot down. Inhale your left leg, down dog hydrant. So bend and really reach. And now with the left foot, step it forward behind your left hand. Keep your back heel up. Rise up, crescent lunge, arms overhead. Exhale into cactus arms. With that work we've already done, you might notice the front of your right hip, lift your arms overhead. Exhale, hands down. We're working on hip mobility, step forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, push into your feet, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Drop your hands. Inhale. Keep the length, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Plant your hands. Exhale, the left foot back, keep the heel up. Arms come overhead, crescent lunge. Exhale, arms behind you, lean your chest forward, airplane arms, really push on that front foot. Inhale, lift your torso vertical, arms up. And exhale, hands down, step back to plank. Knee down plank, all fours, great alternatives. Glide your shoulders in front of your wrists and come down to the floor. Hands at your sides, lift up into locust. That's where you lift everything and balance on your belly and try to remember to breathe. Inner parts of your feet are trying to touch. Hands under your shoulders by your chest, push back, tuck your toes, down dog. Inhale the left leg, down dog hydrant here. That's all we're gonna do. And then exhale, left foot down. Inhale, right leg, 
down dog hydrant here. And then right leg steps forward, come up into crescent lunge. Inhale, your arms overhead. Sink a little deeper. Exhale, airplane arms, like you're moving through molasses. Push into the heel of your front leg. Activate the muscles around your hip. If you really push into your heel, you feel it. And then inhale, torso vertical, arms overhead. Exhale, hands down, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, pushing into your feet. Come up, hands meet. Drop your hands. Inhale, arms overhead. Belly to spine, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fingertips down, step the right foot back, put the right knee down, unfold the right toes. Inhale to come up into low lunge. And then exhale, hands down, stay here. Lift your left arm and open to the side. And then reach your left arm behind you, search for your foot. I have to glide back to reach my foot and then glide forward again. So my knee that's down, I'm really above the knee. Lift your heart and experiment. So the experimentation is square your shoulders up to the front of your mat and then open your chest towards the side of your mat. Not to worry if you're not able to hold on to your foot. Make the shape, activate your hamstrings and now release from wherever you are. Step the left foot back to meet the right, all fours or knee down plank or plank. Glide your shoulders in front of your wrists and come down to the mat. Inhale up into locust again. That's arms by your side, chest up, legs up. Hands by your ribs, press back. Push back into down dog. Inhale your left leg. Step your left foot behind your left hand. Put your right knee down, unfold the toes. Come up to a low lunge. And then as you get ready, find your way into quad stretch. So. Bend your right foot, find your shin, maybe reach for your foot. Experiment with the posture of your torso. Shoulders squared up to the top of the mat, maybe turned towards the side. Release, hands down. Step back into plank, push into down dog. Inhale your right leg. Step your right foot just halfway up your mat. Turn your toes so they face directly off the mat. Move your left hand to the center of your mat and a little further away. And then turn into a modified side plank. So you're turning to the right. Push up, push your hips up towards the ceiling and then lower them down. Maybe your thigh meets the floor. You can move your arm in synchronization with this effort. Place both hands down, put your left knee down. Step back into down dog. Inhale your left leg. Step it halfway up your mat and turn your toes so they're perpendicular to the long edge. Then move your right hand center and a little further away. 
You can elevate your hips here and sink them. And you can do that all on the breath. And then exhale, both hands down, step back into down dog. Bring your knees to the mat, step them extra super duper wide, wider than the mat. So it's not quite child's pose, it's more than. And then come down onto your forearms. Big toes are still touching. So this is a version of frog pose, not yet child's pose. Settle your breathing. Experiment with pushing your hips forward, pushing them back. I had to adjust my knees. They weren't quite comfy in the first position I chose. Come up into all fours. Raise your right leg, reach it behind you. And then hydrant pose. So your right leg goes out, you're trying to hold it, your thigh parallel to the floor, and then bring it in to meet your knee. I'm gonna do that again. So it's a hip circle. Reach behind you, push the floor away, bring your right thigh out to the side, and forward and down one more time. Reach long, a modified hydrant, and then close the circle. Put your right knee down. Reach your left leg long, and then bend your thighs parallel to the floor, bringing it forward, and then close the circle. Knees almost touch. Reach long again, second time around the circle on the left and take your time. So hip mobility is really important to this crew. We've got natural joints, damaged joints, artificial joints last time. Reach long and put that knee down. Step your knees wide, big toes to touch. Now, child's pose. So be active, don't collapse into it. Arms reach long. Put all your attention on your breathing. Steady cadence in, steady cadence out. Steady in, steady out. The next voice you hear will be meant. Bring yourself back up to a tabletop position. Switch your feet with or your hips with your sit bones. In other words, come down to a seated position on your mat with your legs stretched out in front of you and yet your torso is up vertical. So we're just sitting on the mat with legs out in front of you. Maybe bend your legs a little bit so that you can sit up nice and straight. Take your right leg and bend it even more and bring your right bottom of your right foot down to the mat next, right next to your left leg that's sort of semi-straight on the mat. So I'm holding on to my front leg and you can do the same thing. And then if you're pretty comfortable in this pose, maybe take your right foot and move it up over to the left on the outside of your left knee. With your left arm, reach around the front of your right knee and grab it with the, the eye of your elbow. And now you can actually continue to pull your right knee towards your chest. Bring your right hand behind you with spider fingertips and now find yourself in a seated twist. Taking any breath and look off to the right, 
Make it a big breath and then exhale, turn your head across the front of your mat. Good job. Inhale, back to the right. And as you exhale, turn across the front. Let your gaze go across the front of your body. Inhale, one more time to the right. Exhale, turn across the front. Good job. Go ahead and straighten both legs and you don't have to straighten them completely straight, but just flap the back of your knees onto the mat. Just give yourself a bit of a wake up. Now take your, your left foot and put it next to your right knee. That means the left leg is bent pretty, pretty much, but not too much. And hold on to your front leg so you can keep your torso up nice and tall. Uh, then make that choice again. See whether you've got the comfort to lift your left leg and move it to the outside of your right leg. If you don't, it's still just as much of a twist as it was otherwise. So don't feel like you have to do that. Reach your right arm forward a little bit. Use the eye of your right elbow to grab a hold of the top of your left knee and then bring spider fingertips behind you with your left hand. Take an inhale breath and turn your head to the left. As you exhale, turn your head back across the front, across the front of your body, maybe even slightly past the front. Inhale to the left. Exhale across the front of your body again. One more time. Inhale to the left. Exhale across the front. Good job. Go ahead and let go of your front leg. Let both legs come out in front of you. They may be bent any amount. And then take your hands and move them to your hips. So your hands are flat on the ground, right at your hips. And then you can push into the ground a little bit, depending on the length of your arms. Take your shoulder heads and lift them up a little bit and then push them back. This is staff pose. So then take a couple of breaths in this pose. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out through your nose. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Good job. Now just switch your feet with your sit bones any way you can get to a tabletop position. From tabletop, tuck your toes under, push your hips upward, downward facing dog. Good job. Inhale your right leg up and back behind you. As you exhale, bring your right foot to your right hand. High crescent lunge, Ardha Chandrasana. Push into your front leg and bring your arms up and over your head. And continue to breathe as you do this. Take your uh, right hand and grab a hold of your left wrist. Lift your left wrist up just a little bit and let yourself come into it just of a little bit of a balancing side bend to the right hand side. Maybe it's not even perceptible how much you bend to the right, but do your best. Let go of your hands, inhale your hands above your head. Exhale, bring your hands down to frame your front foot. Step your right foot back to meet your left downward facing the right. Good job. Inhale your left leg up and back behind you. As you exhale, step your left foot to your left hand. High crescent lunge on the opposite side. Bring your torso upward, raise your hands above your head, and then continue to breathe at your own pace. Take your opposite hand and grab a hold of your opposite wrist. I believe it'll be your left wrist grabbing your right or your left hand grabbing your right wrist. Lift your right arm up just a little bit and let your torso move over to the left. And a side banding, high crescent lunge. Continue to breathe. If you fall out or you lose your balance, no problem whatsoever. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. Exhale, bring them down to frame your front foot. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Downward facing dog. Let's take two breaths here. Downward dog can be a resting pose. Inhale through your nose. 
Exhale through your nose. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Inhale your right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, bring your right foot to your right hand. Bring your left foot all the way down to the ground now, like warrior one feet. So your left foot is maybe 45 degree angle and your whole left foot is on the ground. Your front knee is bent. And then bring yourself up to warrior one pose. Your hips are squared to the front. Bring your hands down to your hips. Straighten your front leg. And at this point, look for that block. So I know most of you have a block and I know Millie is a creative person. She will be able to figure out what to do to be safe and not hurt herself. Maybe step your left foot a little bit forward. So you shorten your, shorten your um, legs a bit and then straighten your right leg so that your straight, straight right leg, hands on your hips, push your left hip forward and your right hip back. Good job. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. As you exhale, begin to move your hands down to the block in front of you. So if you need to, you can bend your right leg just a little bit. And if you can put your block on the high setting, then you can accommodate your ability to, to stretch your hamstrings on the right side. Most of us who do a lot of other sports uh, tend to very, have very high, very tight hamstrings. So now take your, your left hand, move it squarely onto that block. Your right knee is bent any way that you can be and be semi-comfortable. And then with a sort of a free right hand, begin to move it up toward the ceiling. Revolve pyramid pose. Maybe your gaze goes up to the ceiling on the right hand side. Maybe you say, this guy is crazy. I'm not doing this. And if that's the case, or if it hurts, or you don't feel like doing it, just don't do it. I'll love you for it, especially if you don't get hurt. Bring your right hand down to the block, bend your front knee, bring your torso up vertical, hands above your head with a bent front knee, warrior one, Bring your hands back to your hips. Step your left foot forward to meet your right and just step your right foot back, warrior one feet. Good job. Bend your front knee so you're in warrior one. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. Good job. Exhale, bring your hands back to your hips. Look for that block. Put it on a really high setting so that you can begin to approach straightening your front leg. Maybe you've stepped your, your stance a little bit shorter and maybe you're not straight on your front leg or maybe, maybe you are, either way, it's gonna work just fine. Bring your right hand down to the block and then see about lifting your left arm upward. Maybe your gaze goes upward toward the ceiling. Maybe you adjust your stance like I just said to do and just continue to breathe. Use your breath. Good job and bring your hand down. Move the block out of the way, bring your hands to your hips and bring yourself up vertical. Step your right foot up to meet your left and then just shake it off. Step your feet side to side. We're done with that. Just move right past it. Allow your, all of your weight going to, to go into your left foot and lift your right leg off the mat, tree pose. So your right foot can go, let's start off. It could go right toward your left ankle. So your right heel's resting against your left ankle. Your knee's out to the side. It's kind of like that position when you see horses waiting for somebody to show up. They're sort of sitting with their back feet, sort of one of them's cocked. That's what this is. And then you have the option, you could bring your right, bottom of your right foot to your calf or skip your knee. You could put your right foot above your left knee. You don't wanna put your right foot on your knee. It's very rough on your knee and prone to injury. Bring your hands to your heart center. 
and tree pose. Sometimes it's a good balance day, sometimes it's not. If your body tells you that you've got the stability, go ahead and raise your hands above your head. And then continue to breathe many times in balance poses, we forget to breathe. Bring your hands down to your heart center. Step your right foot down to the floor and just immediately move to the opposite side. So all of your weight goes into your right foot. Your left heel can go against your right ankle and this could be where you stay or you could lift it up to your calf or you could maybe even give it a hand with, with your left hand and lift it above your knee on the right. Bring your hands back to your heart center. Stand up nice and tall and don't forget to breathe. And then if it works for you, go ahead and raise your hands above your head. And there's no perfect pose. If you do the foot on the ground option, you're still doing tree pose. You're still working on your balance. It's all good. Bring your hands down to your heart center, step both feet on the ground and step your feet. Just sort of side to side, shake it off. Good job. Now come to a little stillness with your feet about hip distance apart. We're gonna do this Kriya sort of, a, a, you might call it three breath in Kriya. So bring your hands in front of you and take a, a sip of air in through your nose. Another sip of air and come to goalpost or cactus. And then another sip in to raise your hands above your head. And then exhale, shake your hands to the floor. Inhale for a third. Inhale again. Inhale, last one. Exhale, let it out. Inhale up. Inhale, third. Another third. Exhale, let it out. A little faster. Inhale. Inhale again. Fill it up. Exhale it out. Inhale for a third. Goal post above your head. Exhale that. Two more. Inhale. Inhale again. Inhale up. Exhale that. Last one. Inhale third. Goal post above your head. Exhale that. Good job. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. Exhale, bring your hands through heart center. Bend forward at the waist. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, standing forward fold. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. Drop your hands down to your side, good job. Okay, take your feet and move them so that you're facing to the left side of your mat. Step your left foot way back. So you're facing the left side of your mat and then look down at your feet and make your your toes kind of pointing in just a bit and your heels kind of pointing out just a bit. And your feet might be three feet apart, they might be two feet apart, or they might be four feet apart. Either way, it's all gonna work. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. Exhale, bring your hands through heart center, bend forward at the waist, and reach your hands down to the mat. Let your head hang long. Take less weight into your hands. Let your torso bend. And then let your head just sort of shake. Shake it sort of a yes and sort of a no. And then walk your hands back to the sort of line that you create between your feet. And then walk your hands out to the side of your feet and grab a hold of just the outside of your feet. Maybe bend your elbows just a bit and pull your head downward. Maybe you're not even getting close here and it just doesn't matter. What matters is that you don't hurt yourself and that you don't, uh, don't get done with yoga and say, wow, I really screwed up my back. So don't, don't do that. Let go of your hands and bring them right underneath your eyeballs. Lengthen your spine, maybe come up onto spider fingertips and keep your gaze down at the mat. Exhale, come back into a forward fold. Maybe reach the outside of each of your feet again. 
Good job. Let your head hang long and continue to breathe. It's a long forward fold. Bring your hands now right underneath your eyeballs. Stretch your spine out really long. Then bend your knees a bunch and put your hands on your hips and bring your torso up vertical. Good job. Turn your front foot facing to the front and step your left foot up to meet your right. Move your feet so that they're at least as wide as your mat, maybe even wider now. Let your toes go out and your heels go in and just lower yourself down into Malasana or Frog Pose. Now your block can help you out again. So put your block on your tall sitting and maybe come and sit down on your block. Bring your hands to your heart center and your elbows inside your knees. And now you're in Malasana Pose with some support for your sit bones. Now some of you maybe do Malasana regularly when you practice yoga. And you can just take that block out of the way, let your sit bones move farther down and still have your hands at heart center, your elbows pushing against the inside of your knees, your knees squeezing your elbows, whatever works in your body. Good job. And then just go ahead and let your sit bones move down to the mat. Maybe you support yourself, pull the block out of the way. Good job. Now your legs are stretch, stretched out in front of you. We've been in this general posture already today. Your knees are bent any amount that work for you. Inhale, raise your hands above your head. As you exhale, bend forward at the waist, grab a hold of your shins. Maybe your legs are bent completely. Pull your toes back toward your knees. Maybe you could grab your, your feet if your knees are bent quite a bit. And maybe you've done this a bunch. It's called Paschimottanasana. And maybe you could straighten your legs and maybe even bring your head right down to your shin bones, not me. Maybe uh, grab a hold of your feet from the outside with your fingers and take your thumbs on the inside of your feet as you look at your feet and push on that second knuckle back toward your foot from your big toe. I don't know if that makes sense, but what I'm actually saying is pull your pinky toes backward and push your big toes forward. Good job. And then come back up to vertical. And those of you that have a block, we're gonna do something we haven't done very much before. We're gonna do an inversion. So go ahead and let your, your hips go back and come to your back with bent knees, just like we're moving toward bridge pose, but we're not. And take your hips and lift them up and take that block underneath you and put it right underneath your, your sacrum. And you'll be able to adjust where you put your block as soon as you see where we're going. We're going to lace up the wall pose. Now go ahead and lift your feet upward and point your the bottoms of your feet to the ceiling of wherever you are. If you notice it takes a lot of strength in your abdomen to hold your feet up there, then go ahead and move the block closer to your, um, or higher up your spine and it'll give you more support. Just play around with the adjustment of that block. You should be able to find a spot where it's not using a lot of abdomen strength. You've just got your feet up toward the ceiling. And when you do that, then continue to breathe. It's really important to breathe when you're inverted. Pull your toes back toward your knees. You feel your calf stretch. Feel the rush of blood moving toward your torso and your, your brain. Maybe your hands can be at your side with your palms facing upward. And then perhaps soften your gaze. Come back to your breath. Good job. Bend your knees now. Bring your feet back to the mat. Lift your hips upward. Pull the block out of the way. Hips go back to the mat. Let your knees go wide. The bottoms of your feet touch each other. Supta Baddha So the weight of your 
knees going wide and the bottoms of your feet touching can be comfortable or it can be almost scary. You could take, if you have two blocks, you could put, put your blocks underneath the outside of your knees. You could also hold the outside of your knees with your hands if you're feeling like it's too much of a stretch. Continue to breathe. Good job. Now take your hands to the outside of your knees intentionally. Use your hands to help you close the, the binding of the book. Your knees move upward and now your knees are right above your, your hip bones. Your feet are still on the mat. Let your knees rock off to the right hand side. Take your left arm and move it off to the left. And maybe your gaze goes off to the left, supine twist. Still continue to breathe and then move your knees up vertical and let your knees go off to the left hand side. Your right arm can go to a goal post, maybe your gaze goes to the right. Any amount. Good job. Bring your knees up now. Pull your knees into your chest. Your torso moves up toward your knees. And then just straighten yourself out onto the mat. Shavasana, the last pose. Give yourself some adjustment here. So maybe lift your hips up by pushing your feet into the mat and get your hips square. Tuck your shoulders, shoulder blades together underneath you so your sternum moves up toward the ceiling a bit. And then make your feet wide on the mat. Let your toes go out to the side and your heels inward. Now I will be quiet and you just focus on your breath. We'll be here for about two minutes. Take an inhale through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, let all the air out. Pull your knees toward your chest, your feet move to the ground and just move directly into a fetal position on one side or the other. Just be supportive for yourself. When you're ready, go ahead and push yourself up to a seated position. When you get there, bring your hands to your heart center. One more breath through your nose. Open mouth, let it all out. <sighs> Inhale to bring your thumbs up to your third eye center area between your eyebrows. Honor the goodness and the compassion that's inside of you and inside of all people. Namaste. Namaste.